Hello and welcome to another episode of Demo Review, episode 25. Today we have a man by the name of Gamester. He is ranked Golden Dove at 3. He is playing on Mirage. So let's play. Alright, going with the standard armor buy. Just armor here. Benefit of having <coughs> two side is that you can all go to one side together and overwhelm your C2 opponents. So it looks like you guys can go with the standard B rush. Let's see. Nice, you're running in with your teammates. Going out window, head out. Alright, so let's see where your post plant positioning is. Your positioning now is pretty decent. Backing with your teammate. Alright, see, you're moving around a lot. You don't need to keep moving around like this. You can stay in one corner, either make a crossfire with one of your teammates, or stand behind him and let him take the fire first and bait him out. If he dies, they won't think another person's there. The third you, you can do is just hide behind these pillars, play these pillars, watch Cat slide. As you can see, your teammates is in the right corner to your left, so they can still come up Cat. You have apart uh, apartments covered. With one of your teammates, you have a guy Benj, and you have a guy right here next to window. Oh, good shot by you, good crosser placement. Again, you have to have some awareness about your teammate dying. That leaves you open too. Again, so maybe casually check your radar really quick while you're reloading or something like that. That way you can get a good idea of where everyone is on the map. As we can see, it was only you and your teammate here. The entire benches was open. Uh, the site was open, and this part was open, and you were just staring at window. So again, be a little more aware. You guys got bombed down, so if you guys full save here, you guys can buy next round. You can buy a P250 because you will get 1900 next round. That will leave you at 4200. And it looks like you're going to buy armor. Again, your team's not forcing up. You're forcing up this much. You could have just saved for an AK instead. Didn't have to buy all this. But I do like how you're forcing up and buying nades. It's really smart by you. Looks like you guys are going to go for a B rush again. As we can see, it's probably going to work, but we have one person pushing underpass. Again, 41 seconds is when they can get that pass. Don't need to throw a nade there. That was a bad point to throw a nade, okay? Don't need to throw a nade, especially when he sees you right here. He's obviously going to rush you. Unless he's really bad, then he'll just fall off, especially if he sees no one else, right? As we can see, in this lane, the only person here is Van. He's just chilling, watching apartments. And you have one guy sight, one guy coming up. So again, don't throw a nade if you don't have to. If they're that close, it's just safer to pull out your gun, fall back to a better spot, then throw a better nade. You guys lose that round again. So, now you have to save one more round. You get 2400 next round. You can still buy a P250 only. That way you can do a little bit more damage than with the clog. And out here, C1. Try to take the battle. Oh well. Nothing you can do there, you only had a clock. Well, it's gonna do a lot of damage anyways. Now you can full buy. Got full nades, I like this. Very good by you. Good habits to start forming. A lot of players don't buy nades because they don't understand the use of nades. Again, they can be underpass and meet you right here. Gotta have your crossword a little bit ready. Nice spray down, good recoil to control. I like that nade. There's someone in there. It's gonna fuck him up, and it did. As we can see from that nade, there's obviously someone in there. And it's a kill because he picks that one. Again, your crosshair placement's a little high unless you're expecting, or low, 
unless you're expecting them to come from this there part and not up here where they usually come. A lot of CTs won't peak from this angle unless they play a connector a lot and you've been uh, killing them right there. Alright, so you pushed up. Again, you're not really aware of where the enemy can be at because you just come up connector without really smoking off cat thinking they could be cat. And as we can see, one of the opposites is cat, the other one CT. Just unfortunate. You guys win that round. It's nice. So buy up. Uh, but this time your nades are really limited. At least you buy a smoke. Finally, that buy. What you have going on? Could have asked for a drop from uh, pranks here. But not too much to worry about. Looks like you guys got that smokes. You guys are throwing right here. Your smoke doesn't go anywhere. This is your smoke you threw. Again, waste of a smoke. If you don't know sm smoke spots, learn them. Very important because you can't be throwing and wasting your grenades like that. So now you're kind of scared because there's a crossfire going on. They could be stairs, it could be jungle. If you peek wide this way, you're exposed to CT, jungle, and under Balk. So again, you're just hesitating here. Really gotta hit those shots. That was good tapping by you. Shows me you have good discipline, trigger discipline. But it's just unfortunate because he did have a lot of cover and you didn't. So you guys should be on either a force or a full save as a team. As you can see, these two guys can force up Galil armor. This guy can force up AK armor. You can not really get anything. It looks like you're forcing them. And, alright, this is a good buy overall with the team. And crosshair's a little low, but you don't have to really worry about that as long as you bring it up as soon as you can make contact. So again, this is chest level. If they're up close, they're back by van, a little bit higher. As we can see, your crosshair was again low towards his feet. Depends where you want to be aiming for. If you're going to be aiming close to you, raise a little higher. As soon as you peek up, those little steps to the left behind us, raise a little more higher, and then balance it out. Because that van it is slightly lower than the plateau. So if you want to be aiming ahead, uh, that's kind of what you've got to be keeping in mind. So if you guys save this round, you guys will be able to buy next round. Or you guys keep forcing up until you guys can buy consistently by losing 5 rounds in a row. As we can see, you've already lost 2. Next round you get 2400 if you guys lose this one. Looks like you guys are opting to go for a rush. Bad Molotov by them doesn't slow you down. You can obviously run around that. Grenade. Just chilling, waiting. Teammate died in Palace. You guys should know there's one in there. This guy's gonna push aggressive. Again, positioning wise, was that a really good position? Did you have a teammate that can back you up? Obviously, this guy wasn't peeking right away, otherwise, he would have seen him, and the CT would have seen him first. Pushed in, you might have been able to just damage him with the Glock. Thankfully your teammate's able to get the trade. So now you should be able to full buy AK armor as well as a smoke and two flashes or a smoke and a Molotov. Or an HA grenade and two flashes, an HA grenade and Molotov. And you're going for a standard smoke and two flashes. To me that's a really good buy, it's very strong. You can use those to your advantage. Obviously you can't clear out angles that effectively with nades and Molotov because they don't do damage, but still pretty good buy because it cuts off angles. Deploying flashbang. Here one cat, you should be calling that out to your teammates. Okay, cross their placement, only put it here if you expect them to be close. Or you're going to be pre-aiming that barrel. If you were thinking about pre-aiming that barrel, that was a really good headshot level. Just got to be a little bit quick on the reaction times. If you weren't, that was bad cross replacement. Again, looks like you're having a really tough game. Nothing you can do about that. Just hit your shots. Make smarter choices. So it looks like you're just going to buy a deagle. Your team's forcing up. Maybe get armor too. You're gonna get 2,900 next round if you lose. Throwing fire. Throwing flashbang. If you did buy armor, you would get 4,100. You 
can still buy an AK armor and two flashes, but you're still able to buy right here. So you know there's one person dead on A, two people dead. Obviously Chanel wants jungle. Uh, I like how you're shooting slow, but you just gotta shoot a little bit slower. That person's really dumb. Took advantage of his stupidity, able to get a gun, able to do some damage to their economy. Now, you know there's one jungle, the other guy can assume he's either mid or B still rotating. Or it could be CT by now because it has been a while that you guys pushed out on the site and did some damage. As we can see, you saw him on your screen, you saw a little bit of his head. Again, you're not really covering your teammates, take your teammates position according to yours. You're not really covering him, this is a really bad position by you too. Uh, either clear out CT, if you don't know where the second guy's at, but as we know, both of them are here. That was pretty decent recoil control. That's a good kill. So, 2v1. You guys should win this. You should play passive, play for the bomb. You should know he's still jungle. Play the bomb defuse. Don't make noise. He doesn't know where you're at. And as we can see, he's saving. So, fall off the site, and then you can go pick up a AWP as soon as the round time is over. A little low, you're aiming at their feet. If you do hit them, you're gonna damn, uh, not kill them all the way. Oh, uh, your teammate pushes up. So now it's 5v2. You guys should go where you guys have the advantage at. You should at least know there's still one more B. As we can see, they have two on B. So it would be smarter to bring bomb A. That's what's going on. You planning it really quickly. You didn't really clear sight because we don't know where that second guy is at. We only know one's on B right now. And you're taking up a very bad, if you were going to say that, that was a bad post position for the spot, but this one's actually really good. You can watch jungle, make sure not pushing out. You have teammates mid, so they're watching connector, and you have a teammate CT. So if they go ladder room right, slash window, you have one teammate there, one teammate connector. Grenade. Only thing you have to really worry about right now is flank. And as we know, he made contact with one of our teammates on B. Or CT, I should say. Oh, killed your teammate. Again, trigger discipline, looking at your map. Knowing where they're at. They will not so let's go on to the next one. Again, you have enough money for nades. Buy up full nades. On, like on, this. Smoke. Hold the push. Really good by you. As we can see, they're probably not going to be saving this round, probably next round. And as we can tell on the minimap, they did force up, or on the left side here, they did force up. We also do know it's a stack towards A, where you guys are more heavily sided towards, and this guy is pushing B, so they definitely know it's going to be A. Making contact. No one got stairs. Ooh, nice shot. At least you think. Alright, there's probably going to be one under Balk, or maybe he's on site somewhere, Ninja. Uh, or CT, triple box, jungle. I'll start clearing out your angles one at a time. Don't blind yourself. Just run out there blind. You could have died easily there. Good smoke. You only have to worry about them pushing up on the ticket booth. As we see, that's what he did. You should be watching that next time. 4v2 to a 4 on 1. Last guy could be anywhere. Again, that's your fault. You have the op. As your teammates are coming on the site, you should be watching that ticket booth jump. Or if someone else is watching it, right? Then making sure you watch another angle like stairs or jungle where they can throw Molotovs or nades or peek over and try to kill them. But again, 
always be watching that CT smoke. CTs love to push it, love to hop on the ticket booth. Kind of, if you're going to be the opera, that's kind of like your ideal picking spot if they do something stupid like that. So now it's 8-3. Your economy's kind of bad. You can ask for a drop from Grey Knight here for an AK. This guy might need one too. So maybe you just have to ask for a pistol drop for maybe like Pranks or Rocco. So you're just going to be full saving as your team is forced buying. You should be buying pistol armor so you're not completely useless, or at least a pistol. Making a lot of noise to give away your teammate's position here. Again, look at your teammate's position to yours. He's all the way up there. Either you should be going up to cover him, telling your teammates to follow him up while he's entering, or tell him to come back. Alright, obviously there's some BM going on. Know that there could be one in there. Again, cross replacements kind of low. Gotta hit those shots. That was a very easy shot. He was standing still, not even looking at you. Yeah, as we can see, planning in a very default position. This was default before it was planned for abs. Again, gotta hit those shots. You're just giving away your position if you just take those shots, those fires. Obviously, seeds on site, he didn't recognize you. Teammate comes in, covers you back. So, you have a good spawn to pick Palace right now. Just run up Palace and Probably get there at the same time as if a CT rushed it and made a lot of noise. Uh, let's see if you use it to your advantage. Nice, you do. Really good by you. Shows me you're a smart player taking advantage of your spawns, but again, you are just waiting here. Whereas, as we can see on the x ray, this guy's not going to be there just yet. So you could have just pushed up maybe with your pistol, made sure it's clear on Balk, and then peek it as soon as you get pretty close. And peek jungle, peek stairs, and peek on to top of the balcony as well. Your teammates are going out. You should be watching stairs and jungle. That's a pretty decent nade, but again, don't expose your body too much. Also hit those shots. Again, keep holding the stairs angle. You know that I leave this one there, last guy should be seen, and he's dead. Again, if you're going to be in uh, Palace and you know there's at least one stairs, keep holding that angle. They're more than likely going to keep peeking that. Uh, they could hop on the box and connector. Overall, it's just a strong position for you to hold. Then once you kill that guy, then peek jungle. Or smoke off stairs while you're in Palace, and then peek jungle. And it looks like you're going to peek mid here. As you can see, they're on a force, or I mean, not a force, on a save, on an eco buy. Alright, you're watching the flank because you heard them get poor. Watch the T spawn. See, they called it or something. Yeah, decent positioning right now. Uh, just watching mid. Obviously, they can come up cat if you're not aware. Peek it a little bit. Again, if you're going to be in a spot like top mid, you got to keep checking all your different angles multiple times so you know you're not getting pushed in. As we can see, your bomb's going T ramp. Maybe you should start pushing up mid. Watching cat a little bit. As soon as you clear off cat, then start pushing the connector. Teammate's planning is by himself. Obviously, if the two CTs were there, killed him, he died, they could defuse it. But this guy makes some noise, and you're able to kill him. You have a decent mid spawn. Definitely could be better. But 
you could late peek mid, right? Making the CT think you're not going to peek mid, and then you peek it late. Let's see what your plan of attack is for here. Looks like you're going to go straight up for it. Their opera is not there. Again, you peek kind of wide, just to check that small little sliver. And because of that, he could have killed you if he was holding a wider angle, catching you off guard. Nice, checking multiple angles again, cross their placement. Now you're a little worried about your beef push, your beef flank. Teammates are dying on A. Again, this positioning, not really good. You're exposing yourself to too many different angles. You don't have a teammate watching your connector, and you don't have a teammate watching your your uh, window. So again, this is a really bad positioning by you. If you get peeked out right here, you will die. Making a lot of noise, giving away your position. Maybe you should be walking here. Those people like to play connector, like to play stairs. Right, and they can hear you freely. They're making a lot of noise. Kill one, hear one more. Good awareness. Assuming he fell back. Alright, you gotta think, there could be one cat. You're making a lot of noise, you know there's one connector. Just a flick. Alright, it's so you not using your nades completely. Smoking off that cat part, right? That way you can push up in the connector and peek wide. So now we're going to round 16. You're buying armor. Are you going to watch mid? Are you going to watch cat? You're going to watch B-Ops? Let's see what you're doing. You're stacking B. Oh, I know we're 2 one 2 split. You should be going right here so you can listen. As you can do, you hear one. And you hear bomb drop. So you just hear there's like two here. Uh, this is in really good position for what you're looking at. Again, pick an angle, don't make so much noise. You're giving away your position to the guys in abs. You should know there's at least one guy mid, because he did kill your teammate. Again, you're aiming at upper chest. Again, look at where your crosshair was at. You're aiming at his chest, not really aiming at where his head would be at, and you're just aiming repeatedly with your pistol. So you guys lose that round. Not much you can do about it, except work on your aim a little bit better. Oh, you're buying a Deagle, saving up 850 in your bank. Really smart. You'll be able to buy full nades in two rounds with an M4 and armor. Again, crosshair is really low. Now, you're picking up slightly as you shoot. Peek wide, you expose yourself to three guys aiming already at you because they do know you're here. Again, jiggle peek, it's your friend. Maybe jiggle peek a little bit better, see how many are coming towards you, start picking them off, pre-firing them, as you can hear them running up. Save one more, you'll get 2400, you'll have 5100 if you full save right here. If you buy maybe a P250, you'll have, what was it, 4800? Still enough to buy M4 without uh, head armor, which you really don't need, as you can see. One has an AK, one has UMP, one has a scout. Armor right now is really good, but if, let's say they upgrade the AKs next round, you don't need head armor. Alright, this is a really good position by you. Obviously, he's just looking at it already. If you had another gun, um, might have been able to do more. But he already, was, already in his mind, he was going to check this area, so... Maybe play it one more time in a different round, see if it works out better. And you have 41, or 5100 I should say, sorry. Nice, you're not buying head armor like this. But again, how many times did they die? Did a lot of them die? Are they going to be forced buying up? Or are they going to be buying AKs? Only three of them are buying AKs. Oh, okay, so this guy traded in his UMP for an op. So again, this no head armor buy is really good, really smart by you. Shows me you know how to play the game, economy-wise. So again, you're playing A by yourself, very hard. 
to watch because there's three different angles. You have to worry about connector two, ramp and palace. Do some spray down. Again, you give up A, you don't know where they're at. Obviously they're going to become a B right now, the bomb, or the B is going to go back to T spawn. So you already have one guy pushed up B apps, you have no one A, you have this guy window. You don't need to be here anymore. Look at your teammate's positioning and play off of him. Know that Alright, he's all the way pushed up, I don't have to worry about this, I have one guy window, so I have mid covered as well. Let me go to A. Now you know there's one in B apps. Now you can stay here, your teammate's on A, you get picked up from being AFK. And you have one guy mid. So now you're in a good position. But otherwise, if that guy was able to push through right, and you're still on cat, not a good positioning by you. So you rotate as soon as bombs can climb in. Guys defuse. Yep. Our time runs out. Kills them. Nice. Again, you can buy full nades, I like your nade choice. Again, think of the timings here. They're not going to be at Palace just yet. The fastest they can be up here is around 39, 38, so that's when you kind of want to throw your nade, and by then they're not even going to be peaking it. And if they are, then that's bad by then they're not going to push out. So maybe around 30, right? You waste your smoke up on the palace. Because that would be enough time for them to set up to do an execute. Now they're just running out of T-Ram. Think of your teammates positioning. Your positioning, as you can see, there's one palace. And you should be watching palace nice, but their teammates are letting them out T-Ram. Alright, we won't talk about that spray. Obviously you need to work on that. Again, that was almost really bad. Seems like your sensitivity is a little too high. You're able to chuck your mouse anywhere and it went really far, far and wide. So now you know one guy was like, what, two ramp palace and the second guy is unknown. This is pretty decent position you have here, watching palace. This way you can duck down and crouch to cover yourself. Like this angle you're holding. Last guy unknown, teammate should be watching me, he dies. Alright, you drop your teammate, get the op. Alright, cool. So you realized you weren't hitting a lot of shots with the op, and you're just sticking with the M4. I like this, but now, again, you have no head armor, and you've won two rounds in a row. It's safe to assume, right, because we know they bought last round, right, that they're going to be ecoing. So having no head armor here is actually counterintuitive, because if they shoot you close up with the clock or with a Tech 9 from a distance, they'll do 100 plus damage to you. So again, think about what their the enemy's doing. Are they buying? Are they saving? Uh, do they have pistols? Do they have guns? As you can see, you saw that guy rush out. Cross their placements, you're aiming at the stomach area. Okay, so when you're watching connector right and you have no one in a window, your job is to watch connector and cat, making sure they don't come up. Uh, now you gotta be checking underpass, they could be under window. But as we can see they're rushing in the B, bombs been spotted, you should be rotating, or at least you should be rotating because your teammates died on B. Again, because you didn't have that head armor, this guy's able to one shot you with the Glock. Thankfully your teammates are able to win the round for you. Now they planted the bomb, 
lost one sugar uh, three, so they got 3,200 for planning it. They should be able to buy, and as we can see, they are buying. So now, the head armor, not really needed. You could have gotten hit with that. You could have got one more flash, or you could have got a smoke or an HE. So again, think about what they're going to be buying this round. So again, you're watching mid by yourself, so you got to watch connector and cat, making sure they're not going both. Your teammate should be kind of watching top mid as well with you. As you can see, they're boosting the window. You have to be wary of this. Your teammate peeks at the last second, doesn't see him put push up. So now you're getting surrounded. Mid. Boom. Bombs down. Teammate is clearing underpass again. Look at your teammate's position. You don't have to be looking at that. You should know. From a ramp, last guy. No. Thankfully, he has a bison. He hits you in the head. Only does like 55 damage. So now it's 12-10. This is a good start to a comeback. You guys are starting to pick up momentum here. You guys are starting to build an economy. Any choices again? Oh, it looks like you can get rid of a flash and pick up a smoke. I like that. So they could be saving, they could be forcing here because they've lost so many rounds in a row. As you can see, they're, they are forcing and you're wasting your instant. As you can see, there's a smoke there already. And you don't expect anyone to be mid for some reason and because of that you get flanked again. No one watching mid and you're the third guy on A, you're going connector, you're watching mid, making sure there's no one pushing you. If you would have done your job right, you would have died by this guy and you would have killed him. You guys lose one round, that's fine though, but their economy gets reset, so if you guys win this, they're going to be saving one more time. They'll be saving here, or they'll be forcing up, if you guys win this round. Go, go, go. So, now you're not buying head armor like this, because they did one last round, so they should be buying up good guns. Alright, you're going back to your positioning, watching what you should be, you see the guy can't. Bad recoil control by you, pulling down way too quickly, not knowing how the recoil pattern looks, telling your teammates that they are up cat. And that should be the guy. So you should be either checking out mid, checking out underpass, knowing that they're going to be doing a heavy B, because he was rushing straight on to B site. You should be checking underpass here, because you know, it could be in B, B apps. Always gotta check everything, right? Just to make sure there's no one hiding, someone trying to get a flank, someone lurking. Because you didn't check that angle, that guy was able to uh, kill you. But again, your teammates save you, able to defuse the bomb. So again, they might be in a force by here, they might be just be full saving. Head armor, I would just buy just in case. Don't buy the kit, maybe buy head armor or get two nades, two flashes. As we can see, they're forcing up here, most of them. One has a tech nine, one has a clock. Again, the head armor still might be probably good. Again, you're not watching Cat. This guy's able to run up. He ran up last round. You should know this. Thankfully, your teammate kills him. Underpass again. You're going to be pushing top mid. You should be checking top mid as well. You can't just be running out here. Corners again, crosser placement's really low. I see him on the corner of your screen. I don't know if you're playing 4x3 or you're playing 16x9, but you definitely can see him on the corner. Again, don't get tunnel vision, don't just focus on your crosshair or where your crosshair should be, focus on your entire screen. Teammates win that round. <clears throat> Kill one guy after time, too, as I can see from that $50 that guy has. It's really good. Or maybe he commits suicide or something, but either way, his economy's lacking. They're forcing up. You're getting pistol armor. Again, maybe save that 350 here. But if you're taking the, the rest that maybe they're echoing, 
you can see it. Let's see, they've lost two rounds in a row. Yeah, you can take the risk here and say that they, they might be echoing. They smoke off your connector, you should be peering over it. That's a really bad smoke. You can see over it, obviously, because it doesn't land high enough. So you should be saying there's one, there's one ladder room. You should know there's one shooting at you from underpass area. Here, go to your right. As we can see, there's a guy underpass. Come out, peek. You see his head? Do you react to it, though? I'm not sure. So you're running out of nades here. Incendiary out. Uh, this is a good position from you, right? You only have a pistol, long range, medium range. Doesn't work to your advantage. Good flick to that guy's face. Again, work on that accuracy. Uh, that close of range, you should be spraying as fast as you can with the 5.7 and pulling down slightly. So again, you have to be watching mid. This isn't a really good spot. You're leaving your teammate on cat hanging here. They obviously could have already ran up connector and killed you like they did the previous round, or they could have ran up cat and killed your teammate. As we can see, they're on an eco. So again, not getting head armor. It'll be very counterintuitive for you. Yeah, especially maybe not by the kit. Since we did know they did full say or full buy last round. Now look at you giving up your connector. Plenty of time for them to walk up it, and as we can see, one guy did. You spray, maybe bursting there would have been better than just a full on spray. Full on spray him there, kill him, good job. Again, thankfully, actually you get a lucky RNG shot there. Recoil control, gotta practice that. Now you have an M4, a little bit easier to control than the Fall Moss, because the Fall Moss recoil pattern is very wild and bizarre. Alright, this time you had hover armor against, as you can see, AKs, majority AKs. Let's see what this guy gets AK again. So, again, you're kind of mixing and matching because you're not sure what they're doing with their buys. So you gotta be paying attention to what they're buying in what rounds, their full buying, what the lost round bonus is for them, etc. Again, you should be watching Connector, you don't have to worry about this, you have two guys that should be able to hold down A. Your focus right now should be on mid. Obviously that's your teammate's fault for not watching it, and because of that you suffered because they weren't doing their job. 14-14. Right, definitely winnable, 100% winnable. <coughs> so see you guys lost this, but if you guys win this round, their economy is going to be in shambles. Try to ask for a drop from the Rocco, looks like he did. And you're able to get full nades and you full buy. If you guys lose this round though, it's going to be very hard. Again, just running out there, you're standing still throwing these nades, then you're running forward. Look at the timings. They can get here by 50 because they spawn right here. Again, it takes them about 10 seconds. Maybe even sometimes even at a good spawn right at the edge. 5 seconds to get here. 5, 7 seconds. So again, think about 7 to 10 seconds they can be up ramp and they can kill you. Depending on what spawns they get. Obviously that's what this guy did. Teammates lose that round. So now, you guys are going to have to force up last round. Hopefully this guy drops you. This guy can drop maybe 2 people, maybe 2 foul monsters and he can force by himself. 
so now it just got really hard, definitely winnable, but because you got caught out by yourself with a nade out, you died. Now buying no head armor here is really smart, because they did win last round, they won two rounds in a row, they're always going to be buying full AKs, especially because it is last round. Again, bad position by you because you have to be watching mid. You're the mid player, the co-op cat, you should be relaying that to your team. Four V four, one guy on B, you have one guy flanking towards B apps, bombs down, you should know where it's at, you should be going T spawn, right? To meet up with him. I like this a lot. Or you could just be holding up mid, pushing top mid, trying to get control of mid, right? So he has one less thing to worry about. That way you can solely focus on the V apps part. Now it's 4v2, you guys know where bomb's at. You guys should be playing together, playing smart, playing with your teammates, having good teamwork. This is a good angle you and your teammate are holding. You're watching his push while he watches the little doorway angle. You should have heard bomb being picked up. And so your teammate B should be still in here, chilling here. This guy's here. You guys are in good, decent spots right now to box him in into this area of the map. Here I'm coming. Again, reaction time is a little slow. Luckily your teammates there, that was bad vehicle control by you. Alright, so now this is my ending of the analytical part and the critiquing part of your demo review and onto the scoring. Alright, this is the scoring section for your demo review. So this can have four categories here as you can see on the screen. Each of them out of 25 points, and you have a total score right there. So you got a 42 out of 100. To me, you played like an MG1, or maybe like a Gold Nova Master this game. But obviously, there's a lot of stuff you have to work on, as we can see. From the side screen, the left side of the screen right here, your score is. So, first one's aim. How do I category, or how do I score your aim? It's broken down into three different categories. First is crosshair placement, accuracy, trigger discipline. Crosshair placement. That your crosshair placement was pretty atrocious. Again, you were never really aiming at the head. Maybe once or twice you would be. But those times I was kind of thinking, like, does he know like this guy's going to be barrel? Uh, is he, like, pre-aiming the barrel? Or, oh, like, on a van right there, sorry. Or other times, it's like, is he aiming at the correct spot? Like, do I know what he's aiming? So I'm just going to give you a 2 out of 10. Could have been 0 out of 10 if you weren't even aiming correctly. Uh, but there were some times where you actually were aiming at the head. Stuff like that. Then your strongest point here is accuracy. It gave you a 4 out of 10. Basically, how well do you hit your sprays? How well do you hit your op shots? Uh, and basically, that's kind of the general idea of how accuracy works. I give you a 4 out of 10 because your sprays, while you were controlling your spray with recoil control, right? Pretty decent. Eh. Below par, I would say. Uh, you're able to get a few kills that way. But at least you understand the concept of controlling your recoil. So I give you a few points for that. Your op shots you definitely got to work on. You miss a lot on T side. You definitely should not be using the op until you're fully confident you can hit those easy shots. Then trigger discipline, I give you a 3 out of 5. Knowing when to tap, knowing when to burst, and knowing when to spray. I think you did pretty fine with that. Above average, or slightly above average, you should say, with 3 out of 5. Okay, so that rounds out your score to 9 out of 25. Definitely got to work on that. Next is movement. So what does movement include? includes a subcategory sub of movement, positioning, and rotation. Movement in general is basically knowing the walk, when to run, getting to positions fast with your knife out, knowing what positions you can take. I give you a 4 out of 5. Again, that nip, um, round where you don't know how fast they can be up, what the timings are, and you were caught out with a nade the second to last round, when it's 14-14 like that. If you were playing it smarter, I would have gave you a 5 out of 5, but 4 out of 5 is where you're basically at right now. T-side, I think you did fine. I really didn't see too many mistakes with movement. Next is positioning. I gave you a 3 out of 10. You really got to work on your positioning. Think about where you're watching. How many times have I played the same spot? Uh, one of my different angles of mine can be shot by. T-side, that's what you kind of got to think about. Especially post-plant positioning. Where you're going to be at. What can I be shot from? What should I be watching? Etc, etc. Then is rotations. I gave you a 2 out of... 10 should be a lot faster on CT side and also rotating to the bomb a lot quicker. There's one round on T side where you're just chilling mid, 
right? And your bomb's going towards T ramp, you're gonna go plant A. If he would have died there after the bomb got planted, some guy could have defused it, and you guys could have lost that round, potentially losing the game. As we can see, it was really close, 15 15. On CT side, when your teammate dies on B, if you're the mid guy, if you're playing mid, watching mid, you gotta be the first one to quick rotate. You tell one of your guys, hey, watch your connector, I'm leaving it, watch your mid, I'm leaving it. Right? So again, little things like that that add up to big things. Next is game awareness. Basically, that's game sense, economy awareness, and teammate positioning. Uh, game sense, I gave you 2 out of 10. You gotta figure out where they're coming from, where they could be at, what are the common spots they'd like to be doing, as well as what kind of uh, economical situation do they have. Uh, are they saving? Are they buying? Is there gonna be someone here? So, game sense is basically you just keep playing the game and you develop it more. It's a combination of intuition and logical thinking. So I think you were really lacking on that, so I gave you a 2 out of 10 there. And economy awareness. Knowing what to buy, knowing what to buy. What can you buy, what can't you buy. How much am I going to get if we lose this round? How much is it going to be in my bank? Uh, we've lost a few rounds in a row. What can I buy here? What little things can I buy here to where I can still full buy when we are able to all buy it together? I gave you a 4 out of 5 there. I thought you played it really well. Uh, what held you back from a perfect score was knowing when to buy armor, knowing when not to buy head armor. A few times on CT side, but that's where it really matters. Uh, you bought armor when they were just having AKs where it did nothing, and sometimes you're buying no head armor when they were only having Glocks, pistols. Okay, so so close to a a perfect score there. Just again trying to realize are they going to be buying this round? Are they not going to be buying this round? Like again ties in with game sense. And then another one teammate position uh, teammate positioning. I give you a three out of ten. Know what your teammates are covering, know what you should be watching, and basically teamwork in general is what teammate positioning is all about. Knowing how to work together with your team. If your teammates are pushed up, you should be pushed up with them, <coughs> right? On T side, close enough to get the trade. On TT side, you should know what they're watching and what you don't have to be watching. Obviously, that one round when you're connecting, they come up to Tetris to, to stairs and they kill you. That's your teammates' fault. Nothing you can do about that because they weren't doing their job. And the last section is grenades. Bought, used correctly, and then uh, grenades you avoided or abused. So basically, first section is bought. I gave you a 5 out of 5. You always bought nades whenever you could. I like that. It's a good habit to form. Used correctly. I think a little less than half. You used it correctly, so I gave you a 7 out of 15. Again, know when to use your grenades effectively, efficiently, and don't die with nades in your inventory. Um, third is grenades avoided or abused. So that's you dodging their flashes, dodging their HE grenades, dodging their molotovs, dodging their smokes, I guess you could say. But it also includes abusing their flashes to the to your advantage. So turning from it while they throw it and then peeking right after, able to kill them because they don't expect you to be uh, not blind. Also, when they throw bad smokes, like they didn't connect to that one round, you're able to peer over with your 5-7. Again, that's abusing their own smokes, turning their smokes to your advantage. So I gave you a 3 out of, was it 5 there? A little more than half, you did. Again, I didn't see too much of it, but what I did see I liked, so I couldn't give you a perfect score, so I gave you above average on that. So that rounds it out to 15 out of 25. Obviously your grenades, as you can see, is your best category by far. You have a lot to work on in your other three categories, that way you can boost your score. So, But I think this game, you played pretty solid for your skill level. I gave you a 42 out of 100 again. To me, that's Golden of a Master, so it's Golden of a 4, or it could be even Master Guardian 1, a lower tier Master Guardian player. So keep working on your game. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to message me. Anyone else watching this video, you can contact me through my email address at jazzykrasinski at yahoo.com. I'll put that in the description below if you're interested in getting a coaching session as well.